What's going on YouTube? Paul Paul Piper back here with you and today I'm going to be doing another review of a famous over-the-counter pipe tobacco blend. We've got Kentucky Club mixture, the aromatic version. This has been uh, out of production for I think about a year and a half or two years I do believe. But it was manufactured by John Middleton um, who currently manufactures Prince Albert and Carter Hall uh, and uh, I believe that's the only thing they they're still doing cherry blend uh, Middleton's cherry blend as well but we're going to be reviewing this and as you can see I'm out here on my property it's a beautiful Sunday morning in southwest Michigan temperatures are in the 40s it's sunny there's a slight breeze so uh, really really great day hope that you're all out enjoying it I've got the uh, cell phone positioned here on a, a tree it's kind of crooked it bends out over the river so the rivers right in front of me I've actually got my feet uh, boots on of course uh, in the water and uh, behind me I've got the old bayou the floodplain we've had some snow melt here recently and uh, so the river's up floodplain is kind of stocked so I probably won't hike on back to the back of my property where I've got a fire pit and everything set up because I'll have to trudge through the through the floodplain and I don't really feel like doing that this is a really good area too it kind of has a bend in the river and uh, it's clear I keep it keep it clear on this bank so it's it's a nice spot to to relax to and and you're right on the river so uh, it's pretty cool but um, well let's go ahead and get started with the review let's start with the presentation just like all Middleton blends it comes in or came in I should use past tense for this unfortunately comes in the uh, uh, paper box and as you can see it's got the red plaid and it says aromatic Kentucky Club mixture pipe tobacco weight is 1.38 ounces and as far as the additional branding on it see if you can see that sorry for the light but it says this slow aged mixture of five choice imported and domestic tobaccos is cool burning very mild and pleasantly aromatic and if you're interested to know the blend of tobaccos that they're referring to uh, here is White Burley, Bright Virginia, Carolina, Perique, and Turkish Orientals. So for a over-the-counter blend that had a national distribution and was smoked by a lot of you know our grandfathers and fathers, this was a fairly complex mixture, at least by the origin of the leaf. So it's not, you know, meant to be one-dimensional, and we'll go ahead and, and see if it is. Um, I have smoked this, like I said, I stocked up. When Middleton went out, I went out to a bunch of different tobacco shops, and if I could find any Kentucky Club, you know, there was three versions. You have the original uh, in the blue and white. You have the aromatic with the red plaid, and then you have the continental blend, which uh, it's blue, white, and gold I guess but um, all good blends I think so I stocked up on quite a few of them and so I should be pretty well set I got some bigger tubs and that sort of thing in addition to um, a number of pouches so let's go ahead and open up the pouch itself and like all Middleton blends it comes in the luxury pouch this one uh, with the red plaid. I actually think this is pretty neat. I mean, this kind of reminds me of, got some uh, Canada geese flying overhead. I just had two mallard ducks fly by here a minute ago. So spring is coming and a lot of the uh, critters are returning. So I'm excited about that. But anyway, this kind of reminds me of what was uh, available for, um, 
accessories like pouch tobacco or uh, tobacco pouches. A lot of times you know, you'd find a cheap one and uh, you know it would be a vinyl or or something like that material but it would be um, it would look like plaid so they kind of got that going on here with their luxury pouch and it says a favorite blend by John Middleton company on both sides so let's go ahead and there's no adhesive it just opens up I get a smell of burly tobacco with a topping it kind of has a licorice anise smell to it but then also a little bit of chocolate very light and cherry that's what I smell um, with the unsmoked tobacco now as far as leaf this is dry but not overly dry I mean there's some moisture in there the cut is a coarse cut now they say they have multiple cuts in here and I can't really say that I see it but it's a coarse cut is a, a good cut that and cube cut I to, to pack your pipe so um, so there's that that's the presentation and the leaf itself is very light brown um, like I said I think you s the burly kind of dominates in the composition and you see a little bit of darker leaf so um, I guess that's uh, some of the other tobacco shining through so let's go ahead if you're at home grab your pipe Today I'm smoking another corn cob pipe, Missouri Meerschaum, and I've had this one for a little while. Smokes good. A lot of times I'll smoke my Burleys out of this. Um, I've got another corn cob that I devote exclusively to mixture 79, and I know a lot of people have a lot to say about that blend. I'll do a review on it, but anyway, go ahead, folks. Lice nice. It's a very burly forward blend. I mean, that's to be expected. This is a you know classic American burly blend. It just happens to have a little bit of other tobacco leaf in there. You get the nuttiness that's inherent with all your American Burley. There is a sweet element to it that kind of plays second. And that would be the bright Virginia. The topping a little bit fruity. I would say cherry. I think they're probably taking Middleton's cherry, the topping, the cherry flavor for that, and just putting sprinkling it in. And that's what I get. There's a very, very minute spiciness to it with the Perique. You can barely, you can barely note that. 
but it's it's there. There's a little bit. And very even less woodsiness coming from the Orientals. So bugs everywhere. Mayflies are out already. They were fooled by the warm weather we've had this winter. But room note, it's a little bit, I mean, it is an aromatic. It's a little bit more complex of a room note or unique than Carter Hall or Prince Albert, again, which are two brands manufactured by John Middleton. I think that it's hard to discuss room note when you're the smoker. It's, it's, it's just difficult to distinguish. But I think that this probably has a little bit, I mean, it's going to have that traditional old codger, pipey room note to it, but probably a little bit sweeter, something extra. But it's not going to be full-on Captain Black, Lane 1Q, anything like that. It's going to be much more of an old-fashioned room note. But I stocked up on it for a reason. It's good. I like Kentucky Club products. And there's another reason, um, just kind of a nostalgic reason for it, too. You know, I grew up in rural Ohio, and um, you would see this. A lot of the old guys would, would smoke Kentucky Club. And in fact, not too far from where I grew up, uh, there was this big barn, and they had a hand-painted Kentucky Club advertisement along the whole side of the barn. And it was really neat. It was in great, really good condition, too. And... Uh, It was sad to me because a couple years ago they tore it down. And it was not in bad shape. They tore the house down and the and the barn. But I, you know, felt a profound sense of loss when that when that old barn was torn down. And that's happening more and more across rural parts of America. They're either falling in, they're not getting used because that type of structure isn't really relevant in today's agriculture. Maybe if you're hobby farming, something like that. And they'll still use them. They might still store hay and straw in them, but as far as types of buildings that are being put up by American farmers in the 21st century, they're all metal pole buildings, get their huge machinery in, you know, they're not making the, I mean, it would cost too much anyway to rebuild one of those. So what's happening to them, they're either falling in because they're not getting maintained. And in the case of the area that, that I grew up in, my folks still live, all my family, they actually had a company from... California come in and went all around the fruited plain knocking on doors and asking folks if they uh, would sell their old barn and they came in paid them for it dismantled it put all the old hewn beams on a train 
or a truck and shipped them back to California where they're used and people are building, you know, these really cool houses with them and all over the country and, you know, it's kind of neat. But, you know, now you drive around and there's nothing dot in the landscape. That history's gone. So it's sad. It's sad to me. I mean, there was a lot in, in the area that I grew up that have been uh, torn down. I used to love playing in old barns when I was a kid. We used to play hide and seek and, you know, have battles and stuff on different sides of the hayloft. You climb up those ladders and climb on the beams, jump out, you know, out down into a big pile of straw. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, nowadays kids, at least in those parts, won't be uh, able to experience that. And it's sad. So, anyway, folks, um, I'm going to get back to enjoying my property. It's a great day. I encourage you to get out and do the same. Hopefully the weather's good where, where you live. And if you come across some Kentucky Club aromatic, pick it up. Give it a try. I'm going to give it a, a 7 out of 10. Paul Paul Piper's given Kentucky Club aromatic a 7 out of 10. So, see what you think. And, uh, and let me know. So, I encourage you, if you haven't, check out some of my other videos. Go ahead and subscribe. And for those of you who have subscribed, I thank you. Um, add some comments. You know, have you seen a Kentucky Club barn in your days? Paint it up. Have you had this? What do you think of it? Anything. Add it on the comments there. So, till next time, folks, it's been Paul Paul Piper. Take care.